They wanted to shut it down, a new controversial HBO series about Somali-American family being produced by recording artist Kanan. With Somalis in Minnesota facing negative media stories with youth radicalization, the youth say they've had enough and started a social media campaign, Say No to HBO, to share their frustration. In the largest Somali neighborhood of Cedars in Minneapolis, we met with the Somali youth who fought not to have the TV series filmed in their neighborhood, and they won. Say no to HBO. Uh, it's it's a hashtag that we really believe in because um, what's happening with um, Kenan and HBO coming into our communities, it's basically just... Um, a cheap way or just a, a way that doesn't really challenge the system or the narrative of who Somalis are or who Muslims are because it's essentially just tagging along or follow or going into the bandwagon of how we're how are like how Somali how Somalis in Minnesota are going to Muqdisha to join ISIS it's not showing how Somalis in Minnesota are living or how they've adjusted or how they're thriving it's just saying that oh, here's a story that I have heard about in the news of kids joining ISIS. Let me let me just magnify it for the whole world to see. And that's, that's for us, it's problematic because it's going to, we live here and our, 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 our brothers and sisters live here, our parents live here, our babies live here. And it's very um, unsure, like it's a very tense time to be Muslim and black in America. Across town, Kanan's production office is in full swing. Production is moving forward as HBO is slated to produce 52 episodes of a new series called Merdusho, Minnesota. The tension in Minneapolis brings a new view on the Somali narrative and who decides what it is. Merdusho, Minnesota is a TV series, a drama, a family drama that I wrote and am directing and it is uh, going to be on HBO. And, uh, you know, it's like a TV series. It's long form. And because it's long form, there are many themes and stories that, that we follow. Some of the characters on this show uh, are uh, Samir, who is the lead of the show. He's a 17-year-old kid who is graduating high school. Um, uh, living in a fictional Minneapolis neighborhood. Um, so we don't specify exactly where he's from, but we follow his journey um, as he navigates the complexity of uh, what it's like to be a Somali who is born here. Um, and so he's got, you know, one foot in the old culture, our, you know, back home in the country in Somalia, his dad, uh, in the story, his dad was a professor back home, but now works at a rental car company. And he's also dealing with what that means for him. Is, should he be embarrassed that his dad is not in his rightful place in, in, in society, even though his dad is a, clearly an intellectual? Um, and he has a girlfriend. Should he tell his mom? The fact that it's HBO for one, uh, Catherine Bigelow, who, who, whose work that some of us are familiar with, where she literally highlights Muslims as, as violent extremists, you know, uh, in a couple of her movies, The Hurt Locker and, and uh, uh, The Hunt from Bin Laden, uh, the movie Zero, Zero Dark Thirty, I believe. Um, just those facts, I believe, you know, sort of, the writing's on the wall as far as what, what kind of show, you know, that we expect to come out, and especially when, when K-9, who we all love and adore, you know, um, you know, for us to believe that, you know, HBO would give them, you know, 50, 60, 50 to 60 million dollars to essentially, you know, write this story that where he would have full control when, you know, that type of uh, uh, control is unprecedented, especially for a, for a black Muslim immigrant, you know, in, in, in Hollywood, especially. What I'm, what I'm setting out to do is put an audience in the point of view of a Somali family. So if Somalis feel like they are being stereotyped on the news, that family feels that way. It's a sh total shift of point of view.
And so th that's what's very unusual about this, is to give uh, the gaze from the interior of a Somali family rather than the gaze being and the camera lens being focused from outside in. It's from inside out. And from, from what we know, the funders always control what's put out there. You know, uh, you may have the creative uh, uh, genius to, you know, put something together, but at the end of the day, the people who fund it are the ones who, who have the last say. And those people are not Somali. They don't, come, they don't come from our background. They don't share the same, you know, stories that we, that, that we share. And so it's, it's very hard for us to believe that, you know, it, it'll come out the way, he, the way he's been saying it'll come out. Like, we, don't, we have nothing against Kenan himself, but he could do so much work. He could do such a great show, but without that one extremism plot. Like, why, why will the show basically be about that one thing when Somalis are known for so many great things? You know, why do we have to be sh um, shine like with a dark light? Mm -hmm. Because, because um, basically it's, it's, it's just something that's going to sell itself. That's what, the, that's what the viewers want to watch. That's what they want to see. They don't want to see something good about Somali. They, that's not going to sell. What he, what's going to sell is a show about extremism, a show that's going to make um, us black Muslims look bad. That's what, that's basically, we're the, next tar we're the next target. That's what they want is basically for us to look bad. And, and I'm just, we just can't, we can't allow that. It's not, it's, it's not right. There have always been Somalis that have, uh, you know, been uh, interested and curious about the Somali spirit with the Nimo, uh, 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 and I think that for whatever reason, I was one of those people who was uh, not out to think about success in the in the way that you do as an individual, but always figuring out a way to incorporate the the larger. Uh, identity of as a, as a Somali. We live in such a politically charged climate in Minnesota where the only stories that the media is highlighting is about terrorism. Yep. And so it's only natural for Hollywood, who's been known to capitalize off of stories and environments where there's this, where there's a lot of politics, you know, it doesn't make any sense for them to all of a sudden be interested in a Somali story. They're interested in the Somali story because there's this, there's this, there's this politics you know, of, of extremism and, and about terror recruitment. And so, you know, we just believe that the, the writing's on the wall as far as what the show was actually about. And, you know, to his credit, they might tweak, you know, things, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a pilot, you know, and, 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 you know, at the end of the day, they have full control. They can, they can definitely, you know, sell it how they, how they want to sell it and say that it has nothing to do with extremism. We'll see the final product, but, but we, we hold the, you know, the, the view that it, 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 it you know, this, it's in there at least that they, he he will not be able to tell our story without without that part. And one of the characters, I mean, again, is the stereotype of, of black people in general. You know, there's this, there's a character in there when when the cast came out about someone who's a street person or something. You know, again, it's is a stereotypical you know uh, uh, position that Hollywood takes on people of color, which is you you always have to have have a character that somehow you know who's an outlaw. Or so, so to speak, and so when you already have, when you're already making it clear that you know that's one of your main characters also is a street person, however you want to put it, you know, in order and you're telling a Somali American story, and you know again it's not fair, and plus he's not he's not from Minnesota, he didn't grow up here, he doesn't know what we deal with, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and and he and people might say that you throw that Somali Nima card, but at the end of the day it's not fair for him to tell our story, you know, he he's a person who's distant. You know, as as far as 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 uh, sharing our experience in Minnesota, because it's not it's not monolithic. You know, it's not it's not one you know struggle that Somalis share. You know, it's it's, it's different. I honestly work from a place of expression um, more than a desired outcome. I don't busy really genuinely don't busy myself with what something should yield, what result it should yield. I think that art is best uh, made. When you you put out the uh, the work that you think is true, um, and you know you can't dictate what it does. The Somali American narrative is the narrative of a lot of people, or a lot of uh, I would say uh, immigrants that have come to this country, 
you know, starting new, um, uh, basically doing a lot with, with, with little that they have. And so, I mean, for, for, for me personally, all of us have a personal story, obviously, of, of immigrating to this, uh, immigrating to this community, to this, uh, to this country, and 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 basically um, doing what we can to live a normal uh, life here in America. I don't. I feel like in Minnesota, especially in Minnesota, it speaks for itself. It's like us having uh, Somali malls, it's us having halal shops, it's us having um, little opportunities that we just magnify. Like we use it to the fullest opportunities that other people would disregard like lake street in the 80s was a very dangerous place but have having us show up and open up shops and make that really like our community speaks volumes to who we are as people what is the somali american narrative and for me that's such a big question as far as uh and it's not one that i'm actually setting out to answer um what i'm setting out to answer is the story of one family and how this one family interacts with, with, with each other, with one another, from the stories that I know as, a, as, a, as a, a person who grew up partly here and partly back home. And, uh, and what I'm dealing with is themes of identity, um, which is a very human thing. You know, the, like the way that I wrote music, um, I wrote music that seems very specific to, to Somalis, but yet it has sort of universal global con uh, uh, consequence. And the reason that music can do that, or art in general can do that, is because uh, we are all kind of dealing with the same questions about life. Uh, who am I? Why am I here? What is the meaning of all this? And how do I... Uh, live through my particular set of circumstances. If we don't uh, take the reins of our own narratives, then, you know, it'll always be this idea of, I'm afraid, therefore, we should also all be scared and paralyzed and take no steps to further the conversation. You know, if we all said, let's sit back because we're scared of the outcome of something, then none of us actually end up moving the conversation forward. And what I think is important for Somalis to know is that this particular story is mine. It's an artistic statement. It's uh, of my own... Uh, creation it has not been inspired by somebody else asking me to do it and I wrote it and I am producing it and I'm directing it therefore it is under the total and utter creative control of someone who comes from a Somali family who knows what how what it feels like to sit on the couch and watch an expert on CNN n negotiate your identity and that's what an audience is finally going to get to feel. Especially the fact that it's Kanan and he's Muslim and he's Somali. We just, I don't know, we expect more and we, we deserve more. Yeah, as, a, as a Somali man and as a Muslim man, it's a little, uh, it's something that I shy away from setting out for legacy because we, you know, we're only in this time and in, 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 in this uh, earth for a very long, uh, short time. and. We go and uh, legacy is about deeds. It's what you do, what good you do. And if you do a little good, if you help uh, uh, in some little way, um, then I think that's a good thing. But, but me as Kanan, uh, does it matter? My name will vanish and I'll be dust. And that's, that's, that's really all that will be left of, of all of that. And if I do anything good, it's because people will say, this guy had done something nice for us. That's all. One of my um, biggest like fears with this show is what if um, like the show has extremism in it, and because of that, people, you know, the outsiders, the non-Somalis, will think that this is our regular lives. It's our, it's the, the average Somali person has extremism in their lives, and they will automatically assume that 
the average Muhammad that's on the street, I mean, like the average kid that's, you know, he, he has to do with extremism. And what if one day they, you know, backlash and because of what's going on around the world and they'll get like violence will rise. Rights has already been rising because of what Trump's saying. Now there's a whole show talking about the typical Somali family that has extremism in it. Um, that danger, like, it will be more violent. Like, we'll, we'll have more violence that will be coming towards us. And it's it, it will be less safe for us. So that's my biggest fear is for our safety to be basically taken away, even though it's just a show and it's fictional. Push that I, that I have been feeling is always almost from the the younger generation and we could say that it's because they're so media savvy they're so aware of the complexities of identity and all of that is very well true but i also think when you are aware of all the complexities and all the things to be afraid of you're more likely to be afraid and we come from a people that are proud and brave and we are the uncolonizable. We do what we do and we ask for no permission. And for me, I would say young people need to look at their parents who, you know, as, as flawed as we have been, as divided as we have been, we've also been very independent. We've never asked for permission. My show is not about asking for permission. We do what we do. Well, some of us were born here, some of us have lived here for a long time, and, but at the same time, you know, so Somali is what is what we are, you know, what we'll ever be.